Hey, all you whippersnappers out there in CF3 TV land. I want to welcome you back to another Cult Finds segment. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderfully. I've got some uh, cider. Glacial Till it's from Nebraska. I was going to say that's an unmarked koozie. It's a Yeti. It's marked oh Yeti. God. Oh, God. I have to screw it off the top to show you that it really is. Oh, interesting. One of Believe Nebraska's not, finest cideries. That's not the find for this segment, but no, it's not. Damn, nice, I was hoping for a six pack. Nice product. They can sponsor us if they want to. Jeff, what are you drinking? Nothing. What do you have? Oh, that really is Costco. nature's finest. Costco water. Costco and water. I mean, hey, if we're bucking for a sponsorship, you know, I could pull out my oh, uh, Mountain Dew. Zero. Well, you have a fridge right there and you're not drinking anything? Oh, Just crack it open. Yeah, this earlier. Just I crack it open. Oh, dumb. James Marvin, what, what find do we have yeah. this week? I want to pretend like you guys don't know what find I'm bringing you today, but the truth of the matter is it's a person, and I have the person uh, ready uh, in the backstage area. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, she's amazing. She is a singer, she's a songwriter. She's an artist, she's an actress, and the reason I'm bringing her to the fine segment today is because her most recent endeavor is acting in a movie that might, most definitely can be considered a cult franchise. Uh, I want to bring into the picture for us to talk to uh, Jessica Hotman, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Hi everyone! I'm so excited to be here <laughs> with some some Omaha Midwest people. That makes my heart so excited. <laughs> yes, um, that's how I know who you are. I'm gonna boot it to Jeff because he always has a first question that he likes to ask everybody. Yeah, uh, thank Jeff. you for joining us. Um, what are some of your favorite cult classic films, and were you into that as a kid? And sorry, what was the last thing you said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you into like cult classic films as a kid? And did you have yeah, any favorites? Yeah. Well, I feel like I got to kind of give you a little backstory here. So I'm a child of the 90s. I grew up as a Disney kid. Uh, that's, you know, like my heart and soul, The Lion King, Pocahontas. Um, but some cult films that I remember seeing as a kid, uh, the first one is actually like, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's called Watcher in the Woods. It's actually a Disney film from 1980. And it's a horror film. Have any of you seen it? I'm so curious. <laughs> um, yes, but it's been a while. It okay. sounds familiar to me. Um, yeah, I don't it's... think it's on Disney Plus yet because I always look for like the oldest things that they put on there. Right. But I will I will right. seek it out. Now, the 80s is well known for being, um, there was like a genre of film that's all but died now, but it was called yeah. Family Horror. And it sounds like it would be in that mold, like horror movies yeah. that actually kids could watch. Yes, I did not realize that Disney like dabbled in horror at all. And what's funny is, is like, I remember seeing this movie in elementary school and I'm staying the night at a friend's house, her sister's babysitting us and she tells her parents like, no worries, I'm gonna watch them, everything's cool, we're gonna watch a Disney movie. And they're like, great. And I was not really allowed to watch horror films growing up. So little did I know I would get my experience watching my first horror film. Uh, but it was technically a Disney film. It was terrifying though. It was like in the English countryside and like this girl disappears and the whole town's trying to find her. So that was kind of my first, like what I would consider to be a cult film. I think it's based off of a book and I know it's been remade with like Angelica Houston and a whole new cast later on. Um, I love show or movies like The Truman Show and Groundhog Day. Those really stuck out to me when I was a kid. <laughs> just anything that was sort of like breaking down the fourth wall a little bit or just something that was weird or quirky. Um, I'm a huge Tim Burton fan, so Beetlejuice. When I saw that movie, I was just like, what is this? It was so scary and so awesome. And Edward Scissorhands is like one of my favorite just memories from childhood and film still to this day. Um, Winona Ryder is like, if I could act with anyone in a film, female wise, I think I would choose her. Big Johnny Depp fan, I know he's a bit, you know, in a controversial situation, but he's great in that. Um, I don't know if you can consider E.T. a cult film, like it's so popular now. But yes. 
Yes. But I love E.T. <laughs> I love, love, love it. And like, I, that movie just, it makes me cry uncontrollably. But to get to my favorite of like the cult genre, I love the 80s. I love the 80s. So, Girl Interrupted, Heather's Night of the Comet, um, Teen Wolf with Michael J. Oh. Fox. Like, that whole genre mm. is just like, woo. And I actually pulled out my favorite of all of them, which is this bad boy right here. Ooh, the nice. Lost Boys. The Lost Boys. <laughs> I love and the snap case. Yeah. yeah. I've, tried, I've been trying to find it on VHS because I have a VHS player and I'm trying to start a collection, but DVD will do for now. Um, but yeah, it says sleep all day, party all night, never grow old, never die. It's fun to be a vampire. So this is from the 80s. I don't know if you're familiar, but one of my favorites oh, of the cult films. Well, Joel Schumacher. I don't eat rice. <laughs> I don't eat rice because of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, can I show you one other uh, thing? It's like yes, dirty, so but you'll probably recognize this from the film. So Corey Heim, like in his room, has this like sexy poster of Rob Lowe. And this is actually from 1984. It is the sexy Rob Lowe. Oh wait, it's upside down. The sexy Rob Lowe. Just how you like him. Yeah. So I'm a big Lost Boys That's fan. Incredible. He looks so, exactly the same now. I know it's crazy. This doesn't. Are you a fan sense. of any of the the sequels that came out like a little while ago? You know what? I have not seen anything past this. Good woman. Um, I, sometimes I'm scared to watch like a sequel of something. I'm sure that you feel this way, but it's like it's so good. I don't want to like ruin that initial feeling with it. Uh, but I'm sure it's worth checking out. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask you about Beetlejuice. Sure. If they come out with a sequel, are you going to watch it? <sighs> Again, it's like a little bit of me is like, uh, but probably, probably. Of course. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Corey Feldman played a show here in a small venue in Omaha, and he does Please. cry little sister from the Lost Boys. Um, <laughs> it, there's a it's kind of Omaha lore now the night of that show because he was like six yeah. hours late because he had bus troubles. But wow. um, he was doing like meet and greets at like 4 a.m. in the morning still. So <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. I am actually really sad that I missed that. I don't know when that took place, but maybe I was living in Omaha at the time. Three or four I, years ago, I'd say. Maybe yeah, four years ago, like four, four or five years ago. Yeah, at Maloney's. I, I missed seconds. out. My favorite part of this conversation so far is the DVD will do until I get the VHS. That's amazing. <laughs> that blew my mind because we're like, oh, the 4K of The Shining came out. We got to get that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, I so, love The Shining, too. That's, that's one of my favorites. It's my favorite film of all time. It's it, I, amazing. I, you know, I got to, like, say that that is just, that is up there for me. It's so good. Are you familiar with it, the, the Wendy theory with The Shining? Basically, the Wendy theory is that, like, she is the crazy one, and it's like you're seeing her sort of break down, and every time that, like, there's continuity issues within the film and the camera comes from behind, it's actually, like, her having, like, an episode. And it's the way she's viewing it. It's crazy. Ooh. YouTube, like just YouTube, the Wendy theory. It's um, terrifying. I know what James is doing later. I, he's, he's doing like, it right now, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can we put this on hold for a second? How much time do you it's have? It's literally life changing. There's a video that's, <laughs> that's like a robot voice, and it's I think it's like 45 minutes long. So it's a little painful to listen to, but it is whew, mind blowing. <laughs> uh, she, you know what, and I've said this for years, she's incredibly sexy in a weird way in that movie yeah. to me. I don't know what it is because everyone's like, she's not attractive at all. And I'm like, beg to differ. But that's, yeah. I'm going to definitely, I'm definitely going to check this out. It's olive yes. oil. <laughs> she played yeah. olive oil. <laughs> <Cool. Stay. laughs> and, and what a perfect casting for that. Yeah. Speaking of casting, there's a lot to unpack in this little package here. Um, you do a little bit of everything. I'm not sure where to go first. We definitely want to talk about the most pressing issue, with which is rose blood. And I want I'm saying that now so we can get the, the goddamn graphics on the screen. The Dane this worked one? so hard. Or this one? Ah! <laughs> yes, that one. Well, yeah, whichever one you want. Um, but you, oh my, all right. So much to unpack. So Tina Shepard was in the movie, the original. Um, 
movie where she had these powers, these psychic powers, and could really fuck with Jason like no one ever was able to do before. Um, she did all kinds of stuff to him. And we actually had her on the show when this was a podcast, and I re recall specifically asking her how she felt, A, how she felt about fan films, and B, if she would ever reprise her role in one. She said she thought fan films were a great idea, and I'm these are not exact quotes. They're just, uh, you know, what I recall from her saying that. She was not really interested, paraphrasing, thank you, um, in reprising the role in a fan film. And then I see uh, my friend here from Omaha is going to star as a young Tina Shepard and that she's also going to be in it playing herself. And I was like, WTF, Lar Park Lincoln. How did this happen? <laughs> so tell me how tell me how this came to be. I from yeah, you know the fame film itself. Where did your involvement start. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you got. So man, it's it's such a crazy story on um, how life works sometimes. <laughs> That's a very broad statement, but um, my involvement with the film, so acting hasn't really been like in my forefront. I'm more of a musician, but I have always enjoyed as many, you know, singers enjoy to switch to acting or actors go to singing. It's just, there's like a connection between the two. So when I moved out, I live like right outside of New York City. So when I moved out this way, you know, I was heavily focused on music, but also interested in acting. But a lot of what I've done out here has been more background work or just small roles, that kind of a thing. And I had a background gig where I was like walking in the snow for like six hours straight. And they don't treat you the best when you're a background actor. And I just had this moment where I was like, I am over this. <laughs> I want to actually, you know, get on a camera and speak. I want to have lines. I want to have a character. And I just went onto an app where you can apply for roles. And I'd kind of been holding back just with the whole COVID situation. Production's been really strange. And I saw that the Friday the 13th fan film was casting for a young Tina Shepard. It was a featured thing on this app. And I was like, let's check this out. And I have, it, it's funny, like I have never actually seen all, like I hadn't seen Friday the 13th. I hadn't really, I didn't know anything about it for besides the mask, okay? But I was like, let's just see what this is about. And I clicked on the picture. They had a reference of Lar Park Lincoln from the 80s and at the time my hair was dark, but I saw something in her eyes. I was like, I think we have similar eyes. Like I think maybe there's something there. So I did an audition. I read the script, I sent it in and Peter Anthony, the director got a hold of me like within, I think immediately he was just like, Hey, we love your audition. We'll get back to you. And within a couple days time, they ended up giving me the role. And it was crazy, like I'm not a seasoned actress at all. Um, so they really went out on a limb with picking me to play the role of Tina, but I think a lot of it was just, we have similar eyes. Um, and to go back to talking about, you know, the fan film itself, I know that, you know, I was kind of coming in at the last minute to it. It's like, they gave me the role and we started filming like two weeks later. So I basically had two weeks to like, get the character down, learn the lines. So I was kind of thrown in last minute, but it was just incredible to be on set and to see like how fast it all had come together, but the depth of it, like Peter has had this vision. He's wanted to make this for so long. He's had this story in mind. He's a true fan. So he knows all the little details and he's passionate about it. And I think that, you know, Laura had just talking with her, she had wanted to come back with the role to kind of like, bring it back, but was sort of waiting for the right storyline. And when she got the script from Peter, who's also like, he's new at writing and he wrote the script, which is incredible. She was just like, yeah, let's do it. And then things kind of slowly rolled into place. Should we take a look at the, tra the trailer, which I've never seen it. Um, so this will be like a live trailer reaction for me. James, I know you've seen it once. I, yeah, I, I didn't think, no, I watched it like five times, you kidding me? <laughs> okay, five times. <laughs> Jeff, have you happened to watch it already? I've been holding out since we were getting a guest. So. Okay. And so, I'm, uh, I'm all ready to go. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's my uh, Camp Crystal Lake shirt or one of them. Oh, I love it. <laughs> 
So Jessica, <clears throat> I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, but um, Friday the 13th part seven is my favorite installment in the series. It always has been. It's on and record. I told, I told Lara the same thing when we, when we had her on the show. Um, and I've been waiting personally for this story to be revisited for a long time because of that. And yeah. um, because it's my favorite uh, entry in the series, um, I'm going to be a very harsh critic, I think, of this film more so than any others. Um, so I'm hoping to be dazzled by the trailer and by the final film, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, is there anything you want to set up before we just play the trailer? Or Let's should we just do it? Let's jump okay. in. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> um, I love the gore. There's going to be lots of gore, you can tell. 642. It's <laughs> so, um, go ahead, Dan. I, your reaction is what I care about. Cover uh, of Iran. I like it. I like the music choice as well. Um, the gore, yes. And seeing two versions of Tina Shepard, I can, I, my mind is trying, I'm trying to wrap my mind around how that's going to be set up um, so that they're both involved in the story. But when does this come out? Yes, so this is coming out November 28th is the premiere. Okay. Um, I know that there is gonna be another trailer that's released that has more of a storyline. So this is kind of like, Here's the aesthetic. It's like a, it's like a mood board of like what to expect, um, but more of the storyline will come into play. I know that there is some moments in here where it's like, wait a minute, part seven has happened. Why is this happening here? How do the two connect? So, yeah. <laughs> and Terry Kaiser, seeing Terry Kaiser in there That's made my heart skip a yeah. beat. He looks great, even though he's I think he's eighty now. He's eighty. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. An Omaha native is well, I, he lived in Omaha. Yeah. Which Sorry. is cool. <laughs> wow, that's exciting stuff. We did also tell Lar that she was our childhood crush. So there's that. Um, yeah. And if you look that good when you're her age, congratulations to you because she's still smoking. You look awesome. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, it, it's just a childhood crush thing. It's never going to go away. I don't care how old she is. I love her to death. And she was the sweetest person in the world to talk to. Um, okay, really so is. Jeff, what did you think of the trailer? Pretty cool. I'm I like the music. Uh, the editing is really nice. I like the little uh, pan out at the end with the credits going across the room, and then the little clip of Jason. So that was a nice little touch that gave me a little chill down the spine of oh, this is going to be cool. Um, yeah, you don't get a whole lot of the story, but with a lot of the fan films, 
if you don't know the runtime is going to be like an hour and 40 minutes, 24, <clears throat> um, <laughs> it's good to get a little sample to get you interested to see what the story is. Now, Jessica, is this a full length film? It's going to be an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From my last trip, I mean, you Beautiful. know, <laughs> I'm so not the one seen, editing, but I've been told an hour and a half. Seen cool. a bunch of these fan films come and go with varying degrees of quality. And I just have to say, this one looks like it's going to be uh, pretty top of the line as far as you know what we've seen so far. Um, I know the talent involved, so I can I can speak to that as well. But these both of these guys in the trailer mentioned music. And I know that you have a song that's going to be playing in the ending credits, I believe. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, like I said, music's kind of in the forefront of what I typically do. So it's really cool to be able to connect the two worlds. And that just sort of, um, again, was an organic thing, being on set, talking with people. They found out that I was a musician. And uh, Peter hit me up a couple weeks ago and was like, hey, I think it'd be awesome if you wrote a song for the end credits. And I was like, yeah. So my boyfriend and I, we have a, a dark kind of, I'm trying to explain this, it's like rock synth, almost Celtic-y sometimes, um, Vic, like Victorian feeling, but like, yeah, that type of music project <laughs> that we recently started actually during COVID and we just finished recording a full length album. And we're like getting ready to start putting this thing out and just sitting there like, well, I feel like this song should just be a part of this record. So that kind of connected for us. And when Peter reached out, I think I wrote the track in a day. He sent me like bullet points from the New Blood and from Rose Blood, like just film points and was like, come up with something in this world. So I wrote something, I sent it back, made a little demo, like actually right here in this room that I'm in. I have like a synth over here <laughs> and a little setup and he was like, this is great. So I went down to Philadelphia, recorded it in the studio, and it's actually just getting mastered to be put in the end credits um, of the film. So. so there's a lot for you to be excited on for this picture. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to rapid fire some questions at you. Oh, um, gosh. Okay. I know that you said that you weren't huge into the films growing up, but do you have a favorite moment in Friday the 13th franchise history? Or are you I it? I have two, and I'm gonna have to go with part seven, just the clap because I just love it. I'm, I'm like you, it's great. Um, I love any time that Tina is using her telekinesis and she's using her mind. Any moment of that is fantastic. You know, the nail through the forehead, the gasoline, the fire on Jason, like the staircase. <laughs> yeah, the staircase. It's just, it's all so cool. So, like, that's like my favorite. Um, the sleeping bag hill is my other one. <laughs> it's just so, I feel like people that don't know about Friday the 13th know about the sleeping bag hill. It's so gruesome and, you know, brute force. So that's my other moment. <laughs> yeah. At least until you get to Jason X when he does the sleeping bag kill like 900 times in a row. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Playing such an iconic character as Tina, is there anything special that you had to do to get there, to get those powers from yourself? A um, couple different things. It's a combination. Like I said, I had two weeks to prepare for this role. Of course, watching the film. Watching the film, just soaking it in, and literally putting myself in the mindset of this girl. I was like, she's overwhelmed by these powers. She's killed her father. She's feeling guilt and confusion. And she's kind of, you know, like, who am I? But also she has this super powerful thing within her, this feistiness, like she's a survivor of something. So I feel like it, it's been, you know, trying to merge those two together. And I actually feel like I had to become somewhat anxiety ridden the two weeks leading up to it. Like I had to feel like I had killed my own father, like for lack of better words, to put myself in that role. And then also just, um, you know, I got the opportunity to FaceTime with, Lar and being able to just talk with her like in real life because I, I think she really poured herself into that role and even watching her in interviews it's like she is somewhat of herself in that so I wanted to also know her um, even outside of the character and just talking with her about 
the role was really helpful. She reminded me, you know, it's not just knowing these lines, but you know, who is Tina? What's the core of her character? How do you get there? And then the last thing I'll say is the eyes, you know, like I think that she, Lar is able to tell the story of Tina with her eyes. And for me, I always wanted to capture that through my eyes. And again, Peter Anthony, the director was great about making sure that I was really bringing forth her character here first. That's what I noticed both in the still shots and in the live action sequences. It's all in your eyes. Um, <laughs> so I'm guessing that Lar was very happy with the casting choice of her younger self. I'm not like, this bitch can't play me. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that I know of, no. Lar has been, I mean, seriously, like the sweetest person. Like we got on FaceTime and, you know, I was nervous. I was a little starstruck. I had like just watched the film because I was like yeah. studying the role and I'm like, oh my gosh, here you are. You look so beautiful. And she just took me under her wing. She was so kind. She was encouraging. Um, and I think that that just, I don't know, it just, it formed a bond. Like I feel this bond with her that um, even outside of the film, like we're connected and through the film. So she's been great and, and hopefully she enjoys it. She did text me after the trailer and said that it looked great. So that one felt good. <laughs> she's an acting coach. So yeah, I mean, she's yeah. used to talking to people in your situation all the time, probably half the people exactly. she meets. So she understands it. yeah, and ho hopefully she gave you some advice moving forward from just beyond this role because this is I think this is the beginning. I mean, you've had some small roles on television, and you know I've I've checked all those out. I'm a, I might be a stalker, but um, <laughs> you put yourself out there on social media. I just follow it. So yes. <laughs> um, that brings us to the next segment. Here is your social media. Um, you are out there all over the place sharing. Um, is that just you doing you, or is it always on business? It, you know what? It's a combination of a lot of things. I I actually really like, I mean, social media can be a detriment, of course, like to your, your mental health. But I really like social media. For me, it's like a collage board. It's a way to keep track of my life. Like my 94-year-old grandmother who just passed away, sadly, this past year, she was like, always keep a journal, always keep photographs. And I'm like, I think I kind of do that almost through social media, which I know a lot of people do. But um, a lot of it is just capturing snapshots because I feel like my life up till this point even is so many random things rolled into one. It's music, it's acting, it's modeling, it's you know a whole bunch of just weird, random, odd jobs. I'm never like in one place doing one thing for too long. And so it's just a way for me to like reflect on it. I love the selfies. I don't care what anyone says. I, I'm, I love it. So I enjoy social media. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I just got to find out which, where my good side is. You don't seem to have yeah. a bad side, which is oh, a good thing. I do. So I, <laughs> I want to play a game with you real quick. Okay. And um, before I open it up to final questions for these two gentlemen, because we're we're getting uh, on with your time. Um, we're going to pull up a couple photos from social media that I okay. that I grabbed, and I'm just going to ask you to give context, if you would. And you haven't seen these photos. I have not. Okay. Dane, I don't care the order. Uh, it's up to, to Jessica what she says about them. But here we go. <laughs> Number one. Ah, okay. So, yes, that was after – my birthday party and i had rolled in some sick gifts if you notice there's some disposable cameras in there there's like a little like plastic cosmetic case and i might not look it but i was very very pleased in that picture <laughs> i'm gonna show it again there it is <laughs> lots of disposable oh, yeah, cameras and the notebook I, I was like anytime i got a fresh notebook i was always very excited <laughs> all right what's going on here Ah, yes. So this is very close to where I live. I'm in New Jersey, just right outside of New York City. So um, I'm blank. I think it's Liberty State Park. That's what it is. And it's like this cool boardwalk that goes like right by Manhattan. And so this was kind of during COVID, like trying to find activities. And my boyfriend, we ended up on that boardwalk. And we're just taking pictures. And I stood up and I was like, you know, doing this. He's like, oh, wait, it looks like you could touch the top of that building. So... Dane, show it again. 
Boom. Oh, I thought you were wearing scrubs. I thought, but you're not. It looked like scrubs. <laughs> you know what? That's the summary of, of COVID for me. I was basically just wearing like, a version of scrubs the entire time. So, <laughs> touche, touche. All right, Dane, and the next one. Uh, What's this? Yeah. What's this all about? So that is my sister, my younger sister, much taller. She's like just shy of six feet. Tiffany, who I love so much, and we were at. Oh my God, this is in Omaha. So this is. Um, oh, the place with like the giant bowl. It says it right on the floor there. Ozone. Ozone, yes. <laughs> Ozone Lab. And it was for yeah, her birthday. I've played there a bunch. And, yeah, okay. So I've actually played a show at this place. It was like, I don't even know how it ended up coming together. But it was this particular night for her birthday, her boyfriend was like, let's go dancing. And we went there and it was like all older people. But it was honestly so much fun. Like we just went out on the dance floor and, and had a great time. So older, like thirty-one, thirty-two, <laughs> like you know, the real plus. old people. <laughs> they could still move better than you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they could move better than me too. It's fine. This, and this one here. finally, um, so that is my other sister, my older sister Heather, and I at our EP release show for our project called the Hotman Sisters, which is one of the bands that I'm in. So this is at the Slowdown in Omaha, and we had a big release show party for putting out our EP. Looks like you're anointing the young Who would ever be in a band with their sibling? That's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, what a stupid idea that is, oh, Paul Bosby. Look at that. <laughs> I think this is the last one right here. Ah, uh, yes. So, yeah, this is great. So the, the bluish one, that's my personal, and the top one, the rainbow one, are both like just artistic shots, actually from music videos that I put out with my project called Sun Cycles, which is my like synth pop, almost 80s inspired project. And then the one below, that's my boyfriend. He's also a musician. This is actually the first time we've posted this photo anywhere. We just recently had that taken for our darker rock project that we're putting out an album this year with that specific project so that was right here in new jersey that, that was taken props to mark Dwarski for that photo and to ashlyn and john for the other photos <laughs> they're all probably all right. mad that um, we cropped them into, like a little <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like you son of the bitches ruined my art <laughs> That's what we do on CF3. Dane, Jeff, do you have any other questions for the young lady before I... Uh... Well, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Roseblood, everybody. Ah! What, what's the name? Ah! Roseblood. Um, do I have any other questions? Um, no, except for, are you going to keep acting, and do you have any other roles lined up yet? Yeah, I definitely um, have still been on the grind with that. I just did a short film that's like a sci-fi UFO film. That's actually like a documentary about people who like actually have spotted UFOs. So that's called Chronicles of Bullethead. Um, and then I just also did a film where I was an anxiety ridden girl uh, dealing with some mental health issues called Shadow of a Doubt. So those two things are my most recent projects and definitely going to keep doing stuff down the road. I also wanted to, before I forget, to thank the Lutzes family too. They were the ones that literally made Roseblood possible. They like, they did everything. They did the set, they had hospitality, they housed people. So they're just an incredible bunch. And I know that that's just kind of thrown in here, but before I go, I have to say thank you to the Lutzes family because they're just fantastic. Is the crowdfunding still going on that or are they gonna be doing anything like that? Like if people wanna still get involved with that? That is a really good question. <laughs> I am sure that they're probably still doing something with it. I think they're doing like a, um, well, I don't, I don't know what I can say or not. <laughs> okay. I'm doing some spe like special thing that, um, yeah, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, I figured this would be a good chance to plug that if there was or if there would be yes. something coming out. Ugh, I don't know on that. I'm sure that they still are, but Peter would know for sure. Uh, uh, Peter. Peter, say this, uh, follow the Roseblood like Facebook page. There's tons Please. of updates happening there, like on the premiere tickets. I know they're going to be doing some special things involved with that. So like, that's the best place to stay connected. If you're interested in giving money, if you're interested in being a part of the premiere or just staying in touch with the film coming out, check out the Roseblood Facebook page. 
So I don't know that you're going to get a VHS, but I definitely want a Blu-ray of this movie. Um, I actually asked Peter for a VHS, so. <laughs> well. We shall see. If it's anyone a cool can thing do, to do it. Now. <laughs> All right, so Jessica Hotman, everybody, you have now entered the platform that is CF3, so if there's anything that you've ever got that you want to plug, hit me up. We are adoring fans of yours moving forward. I mean, we were in the past, but we are now moving forward officially as part of your fan club. Um, just let us know. We want to give you every avenue that we have with our viewers to get that stuff out there because, well, Omaha represent, yo! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like you. Senator um, Palpatine in Star Wars, we will be watching your career with great interest. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love right. that. We love you. We I love just you so want much. to say that I think it's so cool what you guys are doing, keeping the cult film just alive and talking about it. It's so awesome, and it's very, very cool. So thank you for having me on here today. Awesome. Thank you thank for you. joining. Glad to have you. Three, have fun.